In this video, I'm going to show you how to replace the coolant temperature sensor on this Ford Escape. This happens to be on the 2.0 liter EcoBoost engine and it's located towards the back side of the engine. Let's get into it. Underneath the vehicle, you may have a panel that you need to remove. This vehicle does not. And on the driver's side near the radiator, you can see where there's a drain. You can use a hose, just get over the side where the drain is right there. You want to have a drain bucket underneath and you can see where there is a wing nut right here. You can use some pliers just to get it to crack free just like that and then grab it with your hand. Just loosen it up as you twist that coolant's going to come out the hose. And you want to drain it into the bucket. If you want it to go a little faster, you can take the radiator cap off up top. Once the coolant's all drained out, we can close up the drain. Just twist it to the right. You don't want to tighten it too much. Just be careful using pliers. Snug it up and take the hose down. Take the wiper arms off, just use a pick. We'll take this little cover off on the side. Just get underneath there, pop that cover off. Using a 15 millimeter socket, take this nut off. Grab the arm, you just wanna rock it back and forth. Get it to separate. Slide that off out of the way. Do the same on the other side. Now we're gonna take these clips off. Just use a pick, get underneath the clip. These ones over here have a, like an extra clip. Get underneath there, pop those out. And grab this cowl and just lift up. There you go. It's just clipped in underneath. Those clips just push down. Using a T25 socket, we're gonna take these two screws out. And that's just gonna sit right there. Using a eight millimeter socket, take these screws out. loose, then do the same on the other side. Now grab this panel and it pulls right out. And we're going to pull the engine cover off, just grab underneath, lift up. It comes right off. Disconnect this hose here, just push on the two tabs on the sides. Slide that off. Remove this bolt here, use an eight millimeter socket. Loosen up this worm clamp here, use a seven millimeter socket. Loosen up this worm clamp right here, use an eight millimeter socket. All right, that's loose. Slide the snorkel off, take that out of the way. Disconnect the connector for the mass airflow sensor. Then over here, just pull this up. 
I'm gonna grab the air box. Just slide this out of the way. Take that out. I'm gonna remove the negative terminal. Use a 10 millimeter socket or wrench. Loosen that up. And just set that aside. And we can loosen up the positive terminal. Use a 10 millimeter socket. Set that aside. Using a 10 millimeter socket, take these two nuts off. bracket and pull the battery out. Grab the battery box right here. I'm just going to pull up. There's a little clip right there on both sides. It's going to slide out. Set that aside. Using a 10 millimeter socket, take these bolts out. T20 socket, take the screw out. Using a trim tool, just pop that push pin out. And this box can come right out. Using a 13 millimeter socket, we're gonna take these nuts off this bracket here. Right there and right there. Slide the bracket off, just tip it up out of the way. You can see where the sensor is right here. Now the connector, we want to disconnect the connector. I'm just using some hose pliers. You could use a pick, or even a straight blade screwdriver. Just want to push down, and slide the connector back. Just a little tab for the connector. Disconnect that. Now underneath, there is a clip. The clip is right here, but underneath. So I'm just gonna use a pick to try to access it. You might be able to use a mirror just so you can see what you're doing. All right, I'm gonna try this style pick. Just get underneath there. Try to take that clip out. There we go. Just using some hose pliers and it slides right out. There it is. Now take the sensor. You can put a little silicone lubricant on the sensor just so it slides in better. 
it doesn't roll. And just slide that in. And I have that with the connector so that it would be facing up just like it was when we pulled it out. Now we need to take this clip, the retainer, and slide this in from underneath. So it's a little tricky to get to. To get the clip in, it's a little bit tricky. This hose is in my way, so getting the clip out was fine, but putting it back in is a little bit trickier. So I'm gonna remove this hose, just use some hose clamp pliers. We'll just use some hose clamp pliers. Move that hose clamp. out of the way. I'm just gonna put the clip on and using some needle nose pliers. Just get underneath there. Slide that in place. Just try to clip it in. Just gonna try to reach underneath there and push it up. Now it's clipped in. While we have this hose off, we'll just plug that connector in. Get that lined up. Lock it in. That's good. Now I'm going to put the coolant hose back on. I'm just going to take the clamp, go over the fitting, and put the hose on. Try to get that to line up. When that's lined up, then I'll just release the hose clamp pliers. Now take this bracket and go over the studs, get the nuts started. Tighten those down. Now take the wires, push the retainers in underneath the bracket. That's good. I take the box, battery box, line that up. Should be lined up with the bolt holes. And get the bolts started. And tighten those down. And this bracket on the side. Push the push pin in and then take the screw. Get that started. Snug that down. Take the battery, and just line that up. And take this panel right here. Just slide that in place. You might just have to bend the, the bracket out a little bit, but that lines up, good. Put the bracket on and the nuts. Snug those down. I'll take the positive cable, line that up, and we'll tighten that down. Snug, give it a wiggle, make sure it's tight. Take the negative, line that up, and we'll tighten that down. And I'll just use a 10 millimeter socket. 
Snug that down, give it a wiggle, make sure it's tight. That's good. Put the battery cover on. Make sure it snaps in place. I'll take the air box. Go underneath the wires or hoses. Get this to line up over here. And then push it down into the bushings. Relatch that, that's good. Take the connector. Plug that into the mass airflow sensor. Right. Now take the hose, intake duct. Get that lined up. Connect this hose here, lock that down. Tighten down the worm clamp. Snug that down. Sure that's snug, that's good. Put this bolt in. Get that lined up. Snug that down. Take the engine cover, line it up. Put it back on. Take the shield, line it up. That's good. And take these bolts. Get those started. We can tighten those down. Snug, that's good. Do the same on this side. Snug that down. And then put these two screws in. Hold the reservoir up. That lined up. Tighten those down. That's good. And take this panel, slide it in place. That's good. Put these clips in. I'll put the wiper arms on. Make sure they're in the same place on the windshield when you took them off. Put the nuts on. Tighten those down. Then you'll put the cap on. Do the same on the other side. Snug those down. Put the cap on. At this point, you want to add the appropriate coolant, a 50-50 mix, up to the max line. Then you want to run the engine for about 15-20 minutes, making sure the engine's not overheating and double-checking the level. Shut the vehicle down. Once the vehicle is cool, double-check the level again and adjust accordingly. And tighten the cap down. When only the best will do, demand TRQ the only company that lets you view before you do. TRQ is committed to offering the highest quality aftermarket auto parts that are engineered for peace of mind. Thanks for using and viewing with TRQ.